which leads us to the last part of our chain right here, which is going to be the compressor. Yes, last video we talked about the new liquid shaper, but now we're continuing on with the Shaper Box 3 series with the new compressor and audio triggering capabilities. These are without a doubt, hands down, my favorite new additions in the Shaper Box lineup. I use these features multiple times in every single beat that I make, and I'll even be offering some hidden gems for the audio triggering, so stick around for that. So without further ado, let's get started. Where I think it's really going to shine in its mixing phase is going to be on a melody bus or even a drum bus. For now, here's what the melody sounds like. Some instruments sound a little bit lower, and some are peaking a bit higher than we want them to. So one way that we can fix that is going over to Shaper Box 3, and just slap on the compressor, which now we can talk a bit more about this tool right here. Now over in the lineup, the compressor is actually separated right here by a line, which is kind of hard to see now that I'm looking at it, where all nine right here are going to be shapers, and the only other one here is going to be the compressor tool. The compressor is the first of a new category in ShaperBox 3. ShaperBox is known for its LFO-driven effects, like the ever-so-popular Time Shaper and Drive Shaper. But now this new category of tools differs in the sense that there are no LFOs. So that's why they couldn't put it under the category of Shaper, because you can't shape it. And personally, my favorite way to use the brand new compressor is going to be on my melodies. Where it is definitely going to be uh, increasing the volume of it. You see right there, turn it off, it's a little bit quieter. Compress it back on, a little louder. This definitely changed up my mixing, so I'm gonna have to go back in there and uh, change some of that stuff. You can change up the ratio, which two to one is a very, um, it's pretty conservative ratio. You can go a little bit more intense like this one. You're gonna have no dynamic range, where two is pretty, pretty solid. The threshold over here, the lower we go, even less dynamic range we're gonna have. Once again, we can change up the frequencies. The low, we wanna add a little bit more compression. Don't recommend it. So the button right over here, you can see it says envelope sidechain input. When active, the envelope is driven by the signal from the other track in your DAW. But we are not talking about sidechaining for right now. We'll go over that in just a minute. For now, we'll go over some of the other options over here. So now we've got band right now, or we can go into free and do something more like this. Very obviously here's the difference there. Change up the attack if you want something a bit more abrupt, go lower. If you want there to keep some, a little bit of dynamic range, you can increase that. And then the hold. You can see what's doing over here. Look at the, the darker orange over there while I move this knob around. Really changes it up. You can even hear the difference, right? All right, the release, once again, we have an A and a B. See how the dark oranges are going a little bit higher from that too? The effect is going, it's taking longer to go away. And then makeup as well, okay? So we, here, it's basically it's volume. So if you think of the compressor as adds a little bit too much volume, you can actually dip down and get back to the normal um, dB that you were at before. Now one thing that's actually very popular is going to be parallel compression, okay? So here we've got way too much compression. This is way too much. I would never recommend going this crazy. Parallel compression is going to be taking a dramatic compression like this, and then the dry signal, and then blending them together to get something a little bit more pleasing. So you could absolutely go that route. I think it sounds fine the way that it was beforehand like this, but this is a very capable parallel compression tool here. And for the basics, it's pretty much all that you really gotta know about the compressor. Now, although I mainly use the compressor for my melody buses, you can use it on a multitude of different sounds as well. Like some slight parallel compression on the drum bus or even the individual sounds like a kick or a snare, or even make some effects or texture sit in the background to not pull focus. The brand new audio tricking capabilities in Shaper Box 3 are hands down the biggest game changer that Cable Guys gave us. Any sound with a sharp enough transient can trigger different things inside of Shaper Box 3, like any of the LFOs inside of the shapers or even the tools. This can help out tremendously with mixing and even some more creative options as well. All right, so in order to do audio triggering over here, I'm just gonna label this right now so you can see what it actually is. Kick, great. All right, highlighting the kick over here and then right clicking the side chain to this track right there. Open back up Shaper Box 3 right there. And now we can go and add, um, let's do a volume shaper. And now I wanna change it on over from sync over to audio and then hit the sidechain input button right there. Hitting the detailed settings button right there, going over to the wrapper settings, find the kick which is right there and then press this button right here. And now everything is all set up to have our kick sidechain to this plugin. And now for the frequency, I actually wanna go over here, go to the low where now the kick is now triggered triggering the effects, but it's not actually routed to the master, so you can't hear the kick. You can hear that volume really dip down, right? I want this to just be around, let's say like, I'd have to cut up the low end to give room for that kick. And then you can shape it as much as you want. And once again, if you find that still clash, you can change up the shape a little bit, so like this one, uh, or a little bit less, so fade it in a little bit easier, go like that. 
so now your kick will no longer have any sort of clashing problems with the low end of your melody. Now I actually want to stop side chaining the kick over to my melody and use the entire melody bus, okay? There are sometimes where you have like maybe a drum sample where you don't have control over the individual kicks, snares, hi-hats or anything like that, but you still want to get that volume pumping effect or take up the low end for, uh, whenever your kick hits or anything like that. Shipper Box 3 makes it so you can actually do that in a very easy way. Now taking our drum bus and side chaining it over to our melody bus. Now every single sound is going to be triggering this effect, all right? Now I made it more, more dramatic so you can hear it, but every hi-hat, snare, open hat is going to take effect and now cut out the low here. You don't want that. And we can still get the same effect that we had before when it was just the kick by going over to the settings right there. So now I've got an input filter, okay? So this is what everything is coming in from the, the drum loop and it's going to be able to trigger it, okay? So right now it's got everything up here, all right? You can see everything, like every little hit right there. But let's go over here and take everything except for the low end out. Right there. Look at that, now only the kick is being hit. That's already incredible. We're getting none of the snares being affected, it's only going to be the kick. But not only that, if you're still having trouble with that one, you have the algorithm over here, which is already labeled on drums, which for the most part, I think I'm gonna be using mainly drums for this. The detail as well, okay? Look at this one right over here. Move it further, put it up. I just realized it's supposed to be more like this. My bad. And honestly, so far, all that I needed to change was this input filter, all right? Everything else is going to be just ways you can really help dial it in. All right, so when messing with the trigger shift over here, I want you guys to recognize where the orange dot is over here in the line in conjunction to the sample, okay? So right here, we've actually got the transient beforehand. We don't want that. We want to look ahead a little bit more. Now it's right when it hits. But then putting over here. I don't want that. I want to use the transient. I don't really use a whole lot of MIDI out stuff. I just, that's just me personally. I don't think that there's really a need for it when it's this good already with audio triggering. So I'm going to move straight over to the threshold over here. We'll crank this back up right there. And now everything, once again, is going to be taking a full effect. If one sound is going to be picking up more, you can explode. This one's not a hi-hat, so definitely aren't going to be affected. Even that can work. You're already done. So if you only have a drum loop without the individual instruments, you can still get this volume pumping effect, which honestly, I've never really seen any other plugin do it quite the way that Shaperbox 3 is doing it here. It's so easy. And you can also use that same side chaining ability over on your 808 right here as well, which I already have done with the filter right here. So that's also why my 808 is not clashing with my kick. I've been looking for other ways to use the audio triggering other than just side chaining my kick to my melody, but the kick is not the only sound that you can use to side chain here. Anything with a sharp enough transient can be used here as well. For example, a snare. Once again, side chaining it over to the melody bus right there, go and find the snare over there, make sure it's enabled. We're going to go grab everyone's favorite time shaper over here, and we're gonna make it go in reverse. But only half of a bar, okay? Now the halftime is going to get enabled whenever the clap is hit. And that is already really cool. I am still thinking of really new creative ways to use the audio triggering with something other than just a kick. So this is one creative way that you could use the new audio triggering capabilities in here in Shaper Box 3. All right, so there's one more trick I wanna show you guys. So in the last video, we talked about why an 808 can't work for audio triggering. The transient is just not sharp enough. But what we can do over here, it's kind of, it's kind of a hack. So right now we've got just the melody bus and the 808s being heard, okay? Even though the 808 can't be the one to trigger anything, what we can do is go and grab our kick over here, clone it. I'm actually gonna be putting it on down over to the 808 right there. Copy it, put it onto our, our kick right there. We'll make this one number like 18, okay? I want to unroute it from anything. So even though it's saying it's being played, there is no noise being happening from there. Okay, it's just coming from the 808. Now we're going to take this muted kick and put it on over, sidechain it to our melody bus. And now we can shape it to the way that our 808 sounds, even though it's only being triggered by the muted kick that's not being heard. But this is pretty much the only consistent way that I can think about but this is pretty much the only consistent way that I can think of having an 808 to get rid of any low end from the melody automatically. This is the only hack that I think I can find a way to do that consistently. So hopefully that helped you as much as it helped me because I hate having to EQ out the low end whenever my EQ hits in with automation. It's just super annoying. All right. These cameras are about to die. This is a very long recording, so if you guys do appreciate this video, drop a like for me down below. And check out the video before this one, and the video next is going to be the actual full review on the ShaperBox 3 plugin as a whole. All right, so that's gonna be all that I've got for this video. But I took a pretty long break in between this series, so let me know down below if you guys even wanna see the full review of Shaper Box 3. I would love to get that video out there, but also wouldn't mind moving on to something else if you guys want me to not worry about it. Also leave a comment down below if you guys are using the audio triggering in a different way than I am, because I feel like there's so much more creative things you could do to, for side chaining than just your kick to your melody, so I don't wanna know if you guys are doing anything else that I don't know about. And with all that said and done, thank you guys so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. 
and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.